everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to do a new kind of cane. We're going to do a holly and ivy border cane. And right here I have some green Cato clay to use. And we're going to go ahead and I ran this through my pasta machine on the number one, roll it up, and then once I have that rolled up, I'm going to punch that whole part down, solid onto my surface. And what you're looking for here is you want a circular cane about a half inch tall and about an inch to an inch and a half in diameter. All right, so once you have that together, you're gonna to take, and this is a Kemper cutter, a circular Kemper cutter, and I use the side of it to cut down into this cane, all the way down into it, and I'm pulling out these sections, okay? Now, it might be a little rough on the bottom end of it, but the main thing is, is to get these cuts. So these half moon-like shape type pieces out of the circular cane. Now that I have that, I'm cleaning it up just a little bit and trying to form it into that ivy leaf. Once I have that, I have like just a, a rod from my X-Acto knife here, and I'm just making it all nice and neat on the edges on the bottom as well as on the top and forming that leaf. Once I do that, I take my blade and I split it right down the middle. And then I take my black and white stack, and this thing is so important. Go ahead and cut that, and then I run that through my pasta machine on a number one setting on my second largest setting. And then I put that right in the middle of the two ivy leaves I've just you know, or I should say the ivy leaf I just cut in half. <laughs> and then put that right in there, make sure it's all lined up, cut the excess off, put the other side on, and this thing gives you the vein. And this is a very stylized kind of ivy leaf, but I really like it. It's so much more fun than just putting a plain color into the center of it. So that's why I use my black and white stack so much. I love it. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to take my black, and this again has been rolled out mainly on about a number two to a number three. And I'm just going to start wrapping this on this ivy leaf. Now I'm going to start, you know, I need to kind of find out, okay, it's not quite that thick, or I should say that wide, so I'm cutting off that extra section. But then I take this long sheet of black clay, and I start to lay it right at the base of the leaf and mold it all the way around the leaf. And if you have to, it's not quite laying down the way I want it to. And the more I looked at it, I was like, you know what? That particular sheet of clay, it's a little bit too thick. I had that on my pasta machine at probably about a, a two, a one or a two. And it was just, it was too thick of a line. Because remember, the black here acts as your line. It acts like a pencil line as you would on a piece of paper. And so you're going to wrap this around your clay here on this leaf because you want to give this thing a little bit of definition. And then once you get it around to where it meets up with that white piece again, you're going to go ahead and form it around everything. I'm using my scissors here also to cut the excess off the back side. Now I did that because I normally would have had it conform right to, you know, the cane itself. But remember, I put it back through that pasta machine and I was just like, okay, the line's not quite thin enough to make it act as a line and not where it overwhelms the leaf itself. And so here I'm doing that. All right, so now that I have this all kind of formed up and conformed into my stylized ivy-like looking leaf, I'm taking a little bit of extra white and I'm making a bit of a registration line. Now this is just an extra precaution for myself more than anything else. I just like to have that registration line there just in case. And now I'm gonna use some red Cato clay and I'm gonna roll this up into a log. I'm gonna make sure it get all rolled up. There we go. And then I'm gonna punch this thing down also to its spout. It's gonna be that half an inch tall kind of thing. But see how I'm looking at this particular cane and I'm comparing it to that leaf. It's too big. So here I have to go ahead and reduce. Again, you know, when it comes to this holly and ivy border, it's kind of at your discretion. I wanted to make sure that it did not overwhelm my leaf. 
and that it was small enough that it would look right when it came to that particular border we're going to form. So I kind of made it a little bit smaller. I'm going to take this red piece. I'm going to kind of stick it up there. I got to cut off the excess. So I'll cut that off with my tissue blade. And yeah, that looks about right. Then I'll go ahead, lay that on the black. And again, that is your line. And you cut it and conform it to the red part of that log. Cut it up until it's just meeting around. Use my scissors to take off the extra. And this will be my holly berry. To form the base of this cane, it's really going to be a whole series of little white plugs or a lot of little white logs. And a lot of this is because of the, um, the, the leaf itself. Because there's all these little half moon-like circle-like areas, you could put that white in there. Or in this case too, if you want to, you can use white translucent clay if you want to have a see-through effect. But I like the white clay. It's just it's nice and clean. just love how it works. And then here you saw me cut up one of these logs into four pieces. You can use these to fill in pointed gap areas where you do not need a full white log. But make sure you fill in all the areas with white polymer clay and build this out from the original ivy leaf and the holly berry you created. With all of these white logs going around this particular cane, you're probably thinking this looks really kind of, you know, chunky and chopped up. But what you're trying to do is that white acts as a buffer around that leaf and that berry. And eventually what you're looking for is you want to get a rectangular kind of cane. So wherever you see like a gap, you want to have a little bit of white, kind of like just this little white brick all the way around the leaf and the berry, and you want it to form into a rectangular kind of, of cane is what you're looking for. Now I'm kind of putting these on, this little extra, on certain ends because I'm like, and I'm then cutting it off, but it's because I want to get a nice kind of side to it, but also where it's all kind of filled in too. So I am using my hands here and my acrylic roller in forming this into a rectangular shape, but also by reducing this cane at the same time. Take your time in the reduction process. Do not press too hard on any one side, but keep an even pressure on all sides when you reduce this into a longer and smaller cane. Alright, so here I've already, I've made this thing where I've reduced it down. It's about five inches, a little over five inches, but we're going to go ahead and mark it at one inch each. And we're going to cut this thin into five sections. There we go, just using our tissue blade and cutting through and cutting our five sections. And then we're going to place them one right in front of the other. So you have them all forming a solid little line as they go and then conform these if you have to as much as possible into a brick. Use your acrylic roller to go ahead and flatten it on all four sides, but especially on the long sides like I am here. And when you're reducing this, remember as you're reducing that red berry, you don't want to you don't want to reduce too fast because it can turn into like a little line. And I'll show you an example of that here at the end of this video. While I am using my tissue blade here to help in the reduction of this cane, I can't stress enough how much using even pressure from your acrylic roller 
And pulling the clay makes such a difference in the reduction. Cato clay, for some reason, it loves it when you pull it just a little bit, just, just gently pull it and it will reduce nicely for you. This is, it really makes a difference even when you're rolling your, you know, when you're trying to roll out a single like log, sometimes just pulling it will give a nice look for you. Now here I'm using my black clay and I rolled this out to a fairly thin sheet. And again, this is kind of being used, you know, you're using your judgment here. Remember, the black clay will act as your line. So you don't want the black to overwhelm the cane that you have going. And you can kind of see right here, it's very, you know, it's very thin. It's not a really, really thick sheet of black. It's a fairly thin sheet of black. And that's what you want. And you want the same, you want that same sheet on both sides of this cane. All right, now that you have both sides of that cane with that you know, sheet of black on it, go ahead and you're pushing it in to make sure it's all even. And then we're gonna take our, our stack again, run that little piece right through your pasta machine on number one and lay it down flat on one side of that black. You want to then cut more slices from your black and white stack and lay them side by side on that black sheet of clay. Now, once you get this all the way to the end on this black sheet, you might find that, well, you know, you can't quite fit a, an entire thing of black and white stripe down. You can see right here, I have just a little edge left. And so as I rolled that out and I'm like, okay, there's, I've got a lot left, but I need to cover that entire end. So I flipped it over and then right here, you're just, you're going to go ahead and just trim it up. That's really what you're going to wind up doing. So then trim it up on the sides and then trim up on that end so it will conform to that brick. And then once you have that, that's a really nice checker on that side. Repeat the same thing on the other side. Now that you have that together, go ahead and place another thin sheet of black, just like you did the first time around, on this particular brick on both sides yet again. Once you have this thing all together and you trim up all the excess clay coming off of the brick and start to reduce this cane some more, in the end, you will wind up with a cane that should be one and a half inches wide and about three eighths of an inch tall. From here, you're just going to go ahead and see me create that other side for this cane. And then we're going to reduce and you'll see the end result. But at the very end here, I want to show you what I did before this. I had attempted this cane a couple of times, but I made the mistake of using softer clays. You know, I, I really did think that I could get it to reduce decently enough, but it just did not turn out that way. <laughs> and you don't, you don't have to use just Cato clay in creating this cane, but I definitely do advise using firmer clays to create this border cane. So now we're cutting down in half and there is our end result of this cane. And right here, you can go ahead and flip it and put it together then and create a longer piece if you wish. Right here, I have the three examples that I did the other two canes before this. And you could see the berry just did not work out. They turned into these little tiny thin lines and it did not work well at all. The one on the very left, I used translucent clay and you know, again, I mean, I think maybe I might have conditioned it just a little bit too much, but you know, you can tell that that little holly berry just got smushed. <laughs> so really definitely try to make or use firmer clays when creating this cane. Right here, I have the examples of what I went through in this video. Please use this for reference and study. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you're thinking. And as always, I'm sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.